Oh, hello! Welcome back to my Chanel. To shake things up a little bit, I thought I'd do a get ready with me while I do my makeup today. And as I do my makeup, I will be answering some questions that you guys submitted via my YouTube channel and Instagram. Now, I have been getting asked for some makeup tips and tricks, but in this video, I don't really go into detail about what I'm doing. I do say what products I'm using. But if you would like to get some detailed, in-depth makeup tips and tricks from me on what I do to make sure my foundation stays all day, how I apply my false lashes, and everything you could ever want to know about how I do my full face, then you should check out my Skillshare class. I do an in-depth makeup tutorial that is perfect for fall, which is coming up just around the corner. And if you use my link down below in the description box to take the class, you will get three months free of Skillshare on me. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so let's get this party started with some Pixie Rose Ceramide Cream. I put this on before anything else, so it soaks into my skin while I'm doing my eyeballs. So first question is, how do you find and maintain the motivation to keep up with your makeup and personal styling? I often find myself just too lazy to want to put on makeup or go full on with my outfits, even though I love how I end up looking when I do. Any advice you have would be amazing. Girl, I feel you. I, I look like this 90% of the time, especially since we've been home in quarantine. I have had zero motivation as well. I think the one thing that's helped me with my motivation is that I'm on social media. So I feel like if I just did all my videos looking like this, not as interesting. So that's been my main motivation to get dressed up and put makeup on. But also, like you mentioned, how you feel really good when you do put in the effort. That's also been a bit of motivation for me is because I like how I look naturally, but I also really like how I feel when I have makeup on and a really cool outfit. So that's my main motivation. Also, I apologize in advance for any construction sounds you may hear in the background. My neighbors decided to redo their roof at 8.30 this morning. <laughs> Now I'm going to go with my P. Louise base. This is in the shade 0 0.5 and I'm going to put that in a fluffy brush and just gently blend that all over my eyelids. What are your thoughts on dating someone outside of the alternative community and do you think it's harder? Also, I love your videos. Thank you. I have dated many people outside of the alternative community and it really depends on the person for me. So if the person didn't like alternative music, rock, metal, then that would be really difficult for me because I love my music and that's one thing that I don't think I could give up for a relationship. One of my closest friends does not like the same music that I do and so whenever we're in the car I never really get to listen to what I like because she's so verbal and vocal about like I don't like this, turn it off, can we listen to something else? And if I had to deal with that in a relationship, wouldn't happen. <laughs> But if the person that I was dating who was an alternative was open to or I guess tolerant of my likes and dislikes, that would make it easier. But I think that being with someone who appreciates you for who you are, whether or not they're alternative, is what's most important. So it's not necessarily if they're alternative or not, it's if they support you or not. And for my eyeshadow palette today, I am so excited to use this. I'm using the iHeart Revolution Raspberry Icing Donut Palette. Look how freaking cute this thing is. Oh my gosh. So I love that it comes in a little box like a donut. And it's squishy. It's so satisfying. And it smells nice too. It smells kind of sweet. But this is the palette. Super pretty. I'm going to try to use all of the shadows today. We'll see how that goes. How did you get comfortable dressing the way you wanted to? How old were you when you started dressing alternative? Honestly, I was very shy growing up and now when I got older, I started caring less about what people thought and I just loved how I felt when I dressed a certain way. And if it's a stranger who I don't know, I could care less what they think. If they're going to be rude to me, that's a different story, but honestly, what they think about me doesn't matter because I don't know them and they don't know me. And as far as being comfortable, I was just comfortable in my own skin, so that really helped. And being confident, you know, is more about just the way you dress. It's more of an internal thing. So just being confident in myself as a person really helps. And I was fortunate to be around a bunch of supportive people at the time when I first started experimenting. So that also helped a lot. And I was in college when I first started to dress more goth or alternatively. And I was very fortunate at the time, like I was saying, that I was around supportive people and that even my boss would support me and say, oh, I like your makeup today, let me see, you look so good. So having supportive people in my life helped a lot. 
So next question is, favorite horror movie if you have one? I'm not a big fan of typical horror films. I love the more classic horror like Bela Lugosi as Dracula, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein, all of the old classic black and white films. Those are my favorites. Universal monsters, I think, is the blanket term for all of them. Would you ever recreate looks from people like metal rock musicians? It depends. For the most part, I tend not to like recreating other people's looks. And the reason I say that is because most of the time musicians that I was sent, their makeup was really, really simple. I forget which artist people have sent me before, but it was like a basic black smoky eye or just a little bit of eyeliner, very grungy, and I was like, but that's not... It's not exciting to me to just do something that's super simple like that. So it depends on the person's makeup, honestly. This pink, though, is giving me life. It's this really dark color right here. Wow. Okay, Revolution, I'll see you. Carla Harvey or Heidi Shepard's look from Mr. Slow Death with a killer on you. I do not know who those people are. I will have to look them up and see. So thank you. Oh, they're butcher babies. I actually saw them once live. Yeah, see, in this picture, I'll see if I can put this up on the screen for you guys. They're just wearing nude lips and really heavy eyeliner. That's like my basic everyday makeup. <laughs> Except I'm usually rocking a black lip instead of a nude lip. But thanks for thinking you would look good on me. What the heck are they doing? Someone said do pink and black. I got you. <laughs> so next question is if, if you were forced to choose any other style of a goth, what would it be? Well, no one could force me but I think I would probably be a pinup girl. Whatever Dita Von Teese's style is considered, that, because she is stunning and I love all her corsets and her garter belts and her style is just goals in every single way. I think I'm gonna go a little crazy and do a halo eye, can you tell? <laughs> but actually, while I was experimenting with different styles in college, before I settled on goth, pinup was one of the ones that I rocked the most and I really enjoyed it. I still do. I just don't have a lot of clothes that would be considered both goth and pinup, so it would be hard for me to marry the two styles right now. And someone had asked how I plan out my looks. I usually try to pick out my outfit or my wig first, and then I do my makeup and everything else based off of that. So today, I'm actually going to be wearing a pink wig, so pink makeup. Ooh, I like this question. If I could pick anywhere in the world to live, where would I choose and why? I would probably choose Italy off the top of my head because I lived there for about a month in Florence, in Firenze, and I loved it there. It was just so magical. That city itself has so much culture and history to it, and it's located within easy traveling distance to all the other famous cities in Italy, so I would definitely want to go back to Florence. Or honestly, I would be happy anywhere in Italy. The food there is just so amazing. And I was shocked that no matter how much bread or spaghetti I ate, it didn't affect my celiacs, which was incredible to me, so there, in Italy, I can eat all the bread and pasta that I want. So that's a big seller for me. Plus, the countryside is absolutely stunning. Who are your fashion icons? I actually don't have a lot of people that come to mind with this. Hmm. Off the top of my head, I would say Marilyn Manson, Dita Von Teese, um, Sharon Needles. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Drag Race lately. And probably the Boulet Brothers from Dragula. I just started watching that show. <gasps> so good. But when it comes to fashion, there's never one person in particular who I would gravitate to and say, this is my style icon, this is who I model myself after. I just kind of take bits and pieces of what I like from a bunch of different people and kind of squish them all together and here I am. <laughs> I actually got a lot of questions pertaining to affordable goth fashion, how to start dressing goth, but I was planning on making a whole series and a bunch of videos just on that specifically. So please be patient, I will be making a lot of videos on that subject. I just have a couple of clothing hauls and a few videos to get out first. But if you can't wait, I do have a bunch of TikToks that I have made about this, so I will link them down below in the description for you guys to watch. I also got a lot of questions about my music taste, what are my favorite bands, and someone asked if I like dubstep, yes I do, rock and pop, I like all of those. Rock and metal are definitely my favorite genres of music. Also guys, look how amazing my new lipstick and eyeliner holder is. This is a Jack Skellington mug that I got for Christmas. Oh, I love it. I think I'm going to use Swoon Lip Liner as eyeliner underneath. My eyeballs from Cat Bon D Beauty. So one thing I will say is that I get asked a lot about my music taste, who my favorite bands are, what I like, 
And I'm not saying this is true for the people who specifically asked for this on my comments for this video, but a lot of the time when people ask me that on social media, it's a passive-aggressive way of seeing if I'm goth enough or if I pass the goth test when it comes to music taste. Do I listen to goth music? Sure. Is it my absolute favorite out of all the music genres on the planet? No. And it irritates me that people think that if you want to be goth, then that's the only music you have to listen to. And if you listen to anything else, especially pop, rock, or metal, then you're not goth, you're just a metalhead who has spooky style. So, if that's how you want to choose to live your life, go ahead, have fun, just don't do it on my channel. On that note, some of my favorite bands are In This Moment, Alice Cooper, Nightwish, Motionless in White, I have a whole bunch of different bands that I love, and of course, I love musical theater and Broadway. And for eyeliner, I'm gonna be using my Fenty Beauty Fly Liner and the ColourPop Liquid Liner, which is a new favorite of mine. Love this. This is the BFF Liner in Numero Uno, which is the black shade. This is gonna be challenging, talking while applying eyeliner. So my favorite musical instrument that's not vocals? Ooh, interesting question. Probably piano. I love piano. I've been playing it since I was about 12, maybe younger. But whenever I play it, I just tend to get lost. And it's very therapeutic, and I just love the instrument itself. The sound of it, I could listen to it forever. And along with that, the organ. I love the organ so much. Toccata and Fugue in D minor. It is physically impossible to talk or concentrate on filming while doing my wings, so here they are. Which one, be on Broadway or be the lead in a movie that goes down in history? Oh gosh, I probably have to be the lead in a movie because as much as I love and adore musical theater and Broadway, movies are forever. You can have them for years and some Broadway shows are never taped and it breaks my heart because some I will never get to see ever because they were only for the moment, which is the beautiful thing about live theater, but if you don't get the chance to go out to the theater and see it in person, it's gone. Like what happened with Beetlejuice, I'm so glad I got to go see that show before it closed forever. Yes, we had the soundtrack and everything, but it's not even close to seeing the show in person. It was such an amazing show. So I'd probably want to be a movie lead, and I just love film too. It's probably my favorite form of acting. All right, I'm gonna try to talk and do this. My favorite books. I grew up on Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, so I love anything that has to do with fantasy, sci-fi, fiction. Fiction is my favorite genre of all time. I've tried reading historical or non-fiction books and they just aren't as interesting to me. I'd much rather get lost in a fantasy world. But another one of my favorite series or authors is Patrick Rothfuss. He wrote The Name of the Wind, which is kind of a mix of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, so it's one of my favorite books. You should definitely check it out if you like fiction. And there is also a sequel to that which I think is called The Wise Man's Fear. I could be wrong, but those books are awesome. So for lashes today, I'm going to be going in with my Dodo Lashes D115 style. I love these. They're super lightweight. and. I have a discount code. Use the vessel of blood for money off. So while I'm waiting for my lashes to dry, let's answer another question. What is one piece of advice you would like to say to yourself? That's a good one. Probably that it's okay to take time off. Because I work from home and I can kind of make my own schedule, I tend to work all the time. <laughs> I'm very much a workaholic and so I feel guilty whenever I do take time off and I feel like I shouldn't be because I can always be making more or doing something else. So that's one piece of advice I would give to myself. It's okay to take time off and read a book or relax. The difference a lash makes. Now I'm going to attempt to spot conceal using my Lancome, if it counts as something in French, waterproof, uh, long-lasting under eye concealer. This is in the shade Porcelain. I love this stuff. And a brush to apply it with, that will be even better. Hello, any volunteers? Next question. This kind of goes along with the question I answered before. How do you stay confident in your clothes if you get looks or comments that are not nice? I have gotten many looks and comments that are not nice. Thankfully, most of them have been just online though and not in real life. In real life, I tend to get compliments that are quite nice. Either that or people just don't have the guts to say something to me in person. If it's a stranger, I do not care <laughs> because they don't know me. They don't know who I am. They don't know, you know, the story behind why I look the way that I do. And a lot of people just assume that I'm doing it for attention, which could not be farther from the truth. Getting attention, especially while out in public, makes me really uncomfortable. I always prefer for people to leave me alone. And if you want to say something nice, that's great. But for the most part, 
I just want to be left alone and go continue on shopping or whatever I'm doing with my day. And online, I block them. In real life, I ignore them because there's no point in engaging with someone who's that stupid or that rude. They're gonna say that to someone they don't know. And as far as staying confident, I dress how I want because I love it and because it makes me feel good. And if someone else doesn't like that, that's not my problem, that's theirs. So it's very hard, but I try never to take stuff like that personally because it's a reflection on the person saying it, not on me. And I love the way that I look, so if they don't like it, that's too bad. <laughs> and for foundation, today I'm gonna be going in with my Dior Forever Undercover 24 Hour Full Coverage in the shade number five. I just discovered Dior foundations. I got these from a friend of mine and I'm kind of obsessed because they give me a really skin-like finish. How long does it take you to get completely ready in a full look? Well, that varies from look to look. Sometimes I kind of go with the flow and see where my makeup artistry wants to take me and I have no plan whatsoever. Those days, it can take two hours. Also, if I'm doing a very elaborate look that requires a cut crease or something really fancy like glitter, then it also takes me between an hour and two hours. A normal glam look if I'm relaxing and enjoying myself, probably an hour, hour and a half. And if I know exactly what I'm doing and it's not complicated, I can get ready in 50 to 20 minutes. What is my favorite accessory? Ooh, I like this question. Probably an underbust corset because I feel like that just changes any look and it goes with everything and it's classic. A black underbust corset. Now for the eyebrows, I'm using the Kat Von D Brow Struck Dimension Powder in Graphite. This stuff is amazing. It is my most used brow product aside from the Kat Von D pomade. Just gonna lightly fill them in. What is your dream vacation? Ooh, probably sailing on a big rig ship in Pirates of the Caribbean. In Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> probably sailing on a ship from like the Pirates of the Caribbean in the Caribbean. I would love to go to St. Vincent to see where they film pirates. That would be a dream. Another question is, would I update my wig collection? See, here's the thing. I feel like I don't have enough new wigs to justify a whole new video because every single wig that I own has been shown in a YouTube video and it never made sense to me to make another video about them when I just showed them in a haul video or something like that. So if I get enough wigs to warrant making a new updated wig video, I will. But for now, I don't really have any plans to. The other thing is that wig content doesn't really do well on my channel and I try to gear everything towards, you know, what everyone likes the most. And for now, that seems to be clothes. Because YouTube is a big part of my income, I have to be conscious of what does well and what doesn't. And so whatever viewers like the most does dictate my content. I would love to post whatever I wanted on YouTube, but because I'm not big enough yet in terms of my channel growth, it really affects my income when I do a video that a lot of people don't care about. So I just stick to what y'all like the most. When I hit like a million subscribers and I post whatever I want. <laughs> now I'm going to contour and bronze using the City Color Contour Effects. Eee! No. No, that was my favorite contour color of life. I cannot believe that just happened on film. My baby. Well, I guess I'm just gonna be bronzing using this palette. Another question is, what is the most underrated goth accessory? To me, the most underrated goth accessory is a harness because that jazzes up any outfit. So a body harness, definitely. That spices up any outfit and it's super easy. You just pop it on and you're done. For blush, I'm using my Il Maquillage blush in the shade Lady Marmalade. Marmalade. Do you have any tips for people who love makeup but have incredibly sensitive skin? Yes, uh, one of my cousins has super, super sensitive skin and she uses Alme. So I would recommend just finding brands that cater specifically to people with sensitive skin. And I'm sure you can Google anything online if you just put in makeup brands that are allergy sensitive or allergy friendly. But Alme is one I know for sure works. And for highlight, I'm going in with the 24 Karat Pro Palette from Jeffree Star. I'm using the shade Sarcophagus. This highlight though is everything. Woo, look at that. Look at that beaming, glowing, everything. And for lips, I'm also going to be using Jeffree Star Liquid Lipstick in the shade Weirdo. The cap matches my eyeballs. It's going to be hard to answer this last question with my lips being busy, but it says, What is your hair care routine? It looks so healthy and beautiful. Oh, thank you. 
So my hair care routine is kind of all over the place. I don't really do anything that's consistent, but one thing that I will say is that I wash my hair about once a week, and that's it. And I have gone for longer. I should just finish my lips and then finish answering the question. I'm gonna do my lips, I'll be right back. Hack for black lipstick. I use eyeliner to get the crisp edges around the corners of my mouth. But when it comes to my hair, I don't really do anything specifically. I wash it once a week, I let it air dry, and I use shampoo and conditioner. The brand I use is called Hask. You can find it in Ulta. And if I'm feeling fancy, every once in a while I use a deep conditioner, but I really don't do anything fancy with my hair. I'm not sure if adding pink glitter on top of my lip will be too much, but I am debating it. Let's try a little bit. This is the Shockful Kat Von D Everlasting Glimmer Veil. Oh! Ta-da! That's it. <laughs> I may have added some more on top of the black lipstick, and I kind of like it. It's a lot of pink, I know, but it's kind of a vibe. I'm feeling it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed getting ready with me and answering all of your questions. Thank you so much to everyone who took the time to submit a question. And I hope you're having a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.